uh, getting ready and uh, understanding uh, what we needed to do to win the game tonight, but also have to really congratulate St. Peter's for being here because I've said forever, you don't take this tournament for granted and for them to do what they did to finish the season strong and get here is a real compliment to their coaches, coaches, staff, and players. And uh, But just really proud of the way our guys prepared, getting ready for this game and the way we came out in the first half and really played well defensively. And I thought we settled in on offense, but uh, a good performance by a lot of different guys. Hey, Coach, uh, Thomas Jones of the Austin American Statesman. Um, well, kind of two-part question. You've played Texas before, but now, you know, Rodney's their head coach. You guys have a good relationship. How difficult is it to play someone you have a good relationship with? And then the second part is, what stands out about this Texas team? Well, one, it is tough when you are playing against guys that have helped, been a part of my career for a long time. He and Coach Haith, Chris Ogden, uh, so many guys there that uh, helped us while I was there and were a big part of our success there. So yeah, it's always tough when you, when you do that because we uh, we all are close. We uh, still you know, we stay in touch with each other. We talk throughout the year, but when you look at them, the fact that uh, you know they uh, one got one of the all-time great scores that can uh, get going. But uh, I like their balance, and I haven't watched them a lot. I really haven't because I just won't allow myself to do that. I won't even I couldn't even tell you who's in our bracket right now. Other than when we came here, we knew it was. Uh, the, the, four, the three teams other than ourselves. And, uh, but I have great respect for Rodney and Frank Haith and Chris Ogden guys again. That, and I know that they're going to be very well prepared. And um, it, it's never easy, but uh, those guys probably know me as well as anybody. And uh, they know how I think. And uh, so, uh, but I think if you ask both of us, would we rather be playing someone else? The answer would be yes. To our right. Aaron Beard with the AP. You mentioned uh, you like your team's focus, taking care of business the way they came in. What did you, in the game, days leading up, I mean, I guess you don't always know exactly how your guys will start until they're out there, but did you see what you wanted to see all week leading up to tonight as well? We, we did. That's a really good – we did because, you know what, we were, uh, we were concerned because our league – I mean, I, I truly believe we, we had the most competitive league in college basketball this year. When you go down – the last week when you, you could end up in a five-way tie for first place. And we really went at each other. And uh, I was concerned about how hard we all had to fight at the end of the year, all fighting for a conference championship. But, uh, and you know, we'd lost two in a row. And um, one game, I'm not saying, I don't think we played poorly, but we weren't our best. And then we played probably maybe our second worst half of the season in the tournament. but. Came back and uh, again, I, I really admire and appreciate our guys. You know, we're very transparent. We watched the whole game and talked about where we lost our focus with our game plan and why we splintered and what caused it. And uh, so, yeah, those guys responded when we went back out on the court and went to work. They they did respond and and uh, just proud of the. Again, they were really focused uh, with with what we need to get done. Third row. Hey, Rick. Mark Canizaro from the New York Post. Um, I'm just, how would you characterize your defensive performance tonight, particularly against Corey Washington? And uh, how much of your size advantage do you feel like that smothered them a bit? Well, I, I, we do think that, you know, they're a team that, if you look at them, you know, they're really an inside two point shooting team. And we, were, we worked hard on guard post ups. We uh, knew they were going to try to get there and back down. And we spent a lot of time uh, not wanting to, to give them a lot of room to operate. and. Uh, try to use our length when he wanted to pass out of it, uh, make it hard for them to whip it to the other side. And I thought we really did a good job standing those gaps early. And even when they were, they, they run really good stuff. They're really well coached. And, uh, but we were, we were focused on the details and uh, that was important. Then I do think our, our size has, has, you know, helps us. There's no doubt in terms of uh, deflections, trying to just take away those windows where they can whip it back to the backside. Then follow up. I do have one quick follow on related a little bit. Um, you you had a pretty good uh, long moment with with Bash on uh, when you when you on the handshake line. Can you share maybe the message you might have given him? I just told him I, I think he's got a great future and I thought he did, had done a great job. And what I say, getting to this tournament is hard, and when you get here, 
it, it, right now it's tough when you lose because, you know, they believe me, they came into this game expecting to win. And, and there's no doubt with what they had done two years ago and with the team that got it going here at the end. And, and uh, you know, they hit us at a time when we played well. But uh, I, I watched them and as we were getting ready. And I'd met him years ago, I think, when he was at St. Benedict's. And uh, we talked about that for a second. But uh, he's got a great future ahead of him. But his team's extremely well coached. And the fact that he knows his team, he knew where he had to try to get them in spots to, to, to win the game. And, that's where, back to your first question, I think our length was a factor for us. Second row. Wes Rucker with 24-7 Sports. Rick, w with Tobey there, what happened when he kind of went out for a while with the leg, and is he all right? Yeah, he, he, I, he's okay. You know, he felt like he had a little something with his, I think his right uh, leg, hip up high or something. But, uh, yeah, we, we could have played him more, but, you know, we decided – not to just to make sure because uh, you know Tobey's one of those guys that uh, sometimes he won't tell you the truth. He just wants to put, play so badly that uh, we weren't going to take a chance with him, even though he felt like he could go a little bit more. They'd kept him, I think, warmed up out there in the hallway a little bit, but uh, we, he, he could have played more. But we just decided not to do it. Third row to our left. Lauren Walsh from WSMV4 in Nashville. Yeah. Hi, Coach. Yeah. Uh, it seems like a bit of a nostalgia tour for you back in your home state, now playing Texas. How do you balance some of the more sentimental things tied to your past with the task at hand to win? Well, I've got great respect for my time at the University of Texas, and I've got dear friends that they'll be friends until the day I die. And uh, like I said, uh, great, great relationships with, with uh, much of that staff. But uh, I've been gone nine years, and I'm a Tennessee volunteer. And uh, the time I had there was you know, special because a lot of, uh, really, there's a lot of people there that touched my lives, and we've had a lot of people that have left that program and done extremely well. But uh, I think the good Lord for the, you know, coming to Tennessee was a blessing. I maybe didn't know it at the time, but uh, I couldn't have asked for a better way to being in a position where, I'm, where my career will end. And uh, when we get ready to play, uh, I can assure you that Rodney and his staff are going to try to win that game as hard as we can. And I can tell you we're going to try to do the same thing. Front row. Coach, I, I know you never know how it's going to go until the game gets started. But when you're in the locker room and you look around and the only guy in your rotation who has not played multiple NCAA, NCAA games as a first team All-American, you know, how much confidence does that give you that your guys are going to handle the moment? Well, you know, we, we've talked about it, and, 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 I, and I will go back again to the start of the year, you know, the, our non-league schedule, uh, going on the road, uh, Michigan State, uh, going on the road, Wisconsin, Illinois coming in, and, you know, Purdue, can't, all that. But it's playing in our league where we were in hostile arenas all year, and our crowds were great everywhere we went. But... Uh, you, honestly, to answer that question, you hope they respond well, but you're not you're not sure until they get out there. And we kept trying to tell them, to, you know, have fun. We, we you've worked hard to be here, and because you do worry about that, you do worry about when they step out there because this is something all all kids grow up wanting to play, be a part of March Madness. They all do. And uh, we said, okay, you grew up thinking about it. Let's go have fun being here. You've earned it, and just be who we are. And uh, so I'm, I am really am proud of the focus these guys had coming in. I do think our older guys being here helps those guys too. Take three, three more questions. Back of the room, right? Thanks, uh, Joe Rexer from The Athletic. Rick, were you happier with, uh, I guess, the willingness to shoot when the shots were there from some of your shooters? And how important were the, the couple that Santi hit there in the game? Well, I think it is important. And, you know, I tell Santi, you know, he impacts the game in so many different ways other than it sh that shows up on a stat sheet. But I said, you know, the one thing about you, Santi, all I want you to do is make the right play. And if the right play is to shoot it, shoot it. And I thought he turned down one, the one he turned over. And I told him, I said, man, you shoot the ball. You, you made two of the right plays to shoot it. And that's all I want him to do. And the same with Jordan Ganey and all of them, just make the right play. And we got guys that we think can shoot the ball and we want them to shoot it with confidence. That was a, something that we had echoed all week. We're going to take our shots. We're going to be aggressive. And I, again, I just want to see them make the right play. And if it's to shoot it, just shoot it. And then we're in a position that, because we normally keep the floor spaced well, balanced well, that we can rebound the ball. It's when 
you turn down those shots when everyone's thinking you're going to shoot it, and they end up in turnovers. Third row, left. Rick Butler, Rocky Top Insider. Rick, what did you like from Jonas Adu tonight, and especially in those first couple minutes when he was able to see a couple early shots fall? He was aggressive. I thought physically he was, uh, you know, he, you know, Jonas can shoot the ball, and uh, I thought he got to his spots. And uh, but again, I thought his teammates knew where he was, and they, you know, we hit him with some ball screens, quick ball screens, and he got off of it pretty quick and got his feet set. Normally, when he gets his feet under him, he he, he shoots a high percentage, and uh, but uh, we need him to be aggressive, and um, you know, he affects so much with his length on the defensive end, and. I always tell them that, you know, you can do the same thing on offense if, you, if you'll just score before you get the ball. And that's mainly talking about footwork. And tonight I thought he was moving well and, and doing that. Last question. Rick, Mike Finger from San Antonio. Uh, hey, in that decade that Rodney was on your staff, what did he do best? And what do you think he does best as a, <laughs> as a head coach? Uh, well, Rodney, you know, Rodney was a high school coach and he grew up uh, – you talk about a guy that's living his dream. His dream job was always to be at the head coach of the University of Texas. And, you know, I had a chance to uh, – I think he uh, – I got a call from Frank Haith one day. Frank was my associate head coach, and he said uh, we, we knew we were going to – we needed to hire someone. I can't remember who had left. Uh, somebody on our staff had left, left for a head job. And, but Rodney had been offered a chance to work for Kelvin Sampson uh, the year before, and, and uh, Frank asked me, he said, what would happen if Rodney took the job with Kelvin? I said, I won't hire him because of my respect for Kelvin. I said, you know, Kelvin, I've known each other longer than I've known Rodney. And so if he goes to Oklahoma, you know, that's, I'm not going, I wouldn't even ask Kelvin to talk to him. And so Rodney, if, I, if I'm telling you right here, turned it down and a year later we, we hired him. And uh, he came in and uh, worked extremely hard. I mean, a very detailed, uh, uh, person is going to dot the I's, cross the T's, and he's intense. Uh, he's a guy that's going to talk a lot about you know his teams being tough, hard nosed, and um, but he did a lot of a, a lot of things because the one thing that we've always done is I've always told every guy we've ever hired we're not we're not trying to hire recruiters, but we want guys that do recruit, but we want coaches, and we want every guy to get up every day like it was his program and work that way and. Rodney did that, and I knew that he was going to do his job, uh, just like all the guys that I've had with me, and and he did a great job helping us win a lot of games. Okay, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you, guys. Ernie Nestor says hi. Yeah, tell Ernie I said hi.